I've been sort of struggling to complete the three new timelines in the model life of fate. Not because they were challenging, which they were, but because I had a tough time being motivated to run the content. Which got me thinking, why is that? And why don't I feel the same way about other action RPG endgame systems? Well, for starters, I got almost a thousand hours into this game, and the majority is in the model life of fate. I don't really play arena, that is definitely part of it. I may just be bored, but I have over 2000 hours in PoE and uncountable hours in Diablo 2. And of course Last Epoch is not early access, but is that all? Should we just wait? I think there's more to it than that. And this got me thinking and I decided to make a video about it. I'm going to break down the monolith in this video. First, some assumptions to work with, then the features of the monolith, and finally the design and philosophy of the monolith which I feel is the main issue here. I'm assuming that the monolith of fate will be the main endgame system in Last Epoch. Other endgame systems can be bolted onto the monolith of fate, but in essence they are add-ons. I think that the monolith of fate can be played as a solitary system, but for example the eternity cache cannot. It needs something to run on. The Eternity Cache will appear in levels in the Model Life of Fate the same way that Alva and her incursion mechanic appear in maps in Path of Exile. The Monolith is in that sense comparable to the Atlas in PoE. I'm assuming that the current state of the monolith isn't the final state. That's not really an assumption, of course, it is true, it is still in development, regardless it's good to mention. And finally, I'm assuming the monolith of fate has the purpose to entertain players for hundreds of hours with it being the main endgame system, next to perhaps the arena. Whether it succeeds, that's not a question. We'll get into that. So these are the three assumptions. Let's look at the current implementation of the monolith of fate. I want to make a distinction between certain design decisions on the one hand and a bunch of features and mechanics on the other hand. An example of a design decision is the penalty of losing echo progression when dying. An example of a feature are the shrines you find in the levels. A design decision is something you can alter and the gameplay experience and fundamental of the monolith would significantly change. A feature is something you can remove or add and the core gameplay of the monolith remains mostly intact. Let's first look at some of the features the monolith currently offers. And I'm going to cover the main features here, not every single thing the monolith has to offer. The shrines are a decent example of a feature, but there's really not much to say about them. Instead, let's look at the major features, starting with lore and narrative. I watched Mike, one of the last Epoch devs, stream the game the other day and he talked a lot about how something was thematically fitting or not. Last Epoch as a game revolves around time travel and different eras and from that perspective, from that theme, the monolith of fate makes a lot of sense. The monolith of fate lets you discover what would have happened in other timelines and parallel universes should things have gone a little differently. You're seeing different outcomes of familiar events, you're fighting bosses that are your allies otherwise. Thematically, the monolith of fate is an extension of the campaign by reflecting on the narrative, by showing familiar areas in a new era and by providing a lot of background information. There are two issues with lore in a hack and slash game however. One, no one cares about lore and two, the few people who do only care about it once. Even if you are in a small group that actually cares about the lore, like me, you don't need to see that stuff over and over again. The storylines in the monolith of fate offer a fresh perspective on events in Eterra but after seeing them once, there's no reason to revisit the same event. From a lore perspective, doing the entire Mole Level Fate once is amazing because you see all the timelines, after that it is pointless. Another issue here is that each timeline only has three quest echoes in which the narrative is told. Every other echo is just filler with nothing happening at all. As a lore fan, you have to cut through a lot of enemies to get to the lore. From that perspective, it is very grindy. My point is, if you play the monolith of fate for the lore, it's not particularly an enjoyable experience, especially the high level timelines which take a long time to complete, in particular if you die every now and then. Another main feature the monolith offers, something you don't find anywhere else, are excellent boss fights. I would argue that the boss fights in the monolith of fate in particular are some of the best the game has to offer. They're rather original, mostly well balanced, fun, engaging, challenging and bosses drop cool, guaranteed uniques which gives you a reason to go there. In order to reach the boss you need to work your way up the entire timeline with up to 30 plus echoes and it takes a long time. Depends on the build, sure, but still. 30 plus echoes, it's a lot and it feels needlessly grindy. You can cut that down quite a bit and I don't think anyone would complain. 
If you want to farm a boss for a unique in the current system, it's super boring, right? It takes ages as well. There are no additional systems to spawn bosses separately by farming specific items or in any other way. You can't skip echoes either. In Diablo 2, you could do Mephisto runs simply by teleporting to a waypoint and kill him. In Path of Exile, you can farm or buy fragments, combine them in the map device and fight Elder, Shaper or Aziri. In Last Epoch, such a system is missing, which makes it very hard and frustrating to get certain uniques. Even if multiplayer would exist, there are no ways to instantly get to a boss, maybe by joining someone else's quest echo, but that is hardly consistent either. My point is, if you play the monolith for the bosses, the way leading up to that is not particularly an enjoyable experience, especially at high level timelines, which take a long time to complete, in particular if you die every now and then. Yeah, I'm starting to repeat myself here indeed. The last feature I want to touch on is character progression. Now that's a bit vague, maybe, but what I mean here is that the monolith offers a few particular ways to progress your character that you won't find anywhere else. This in itself is a design decision, by the way. One of these ways, the unique loot, is something we already touched on. Another one is the blessings. The blessings which you receive after completing the timeline are unique, random and provide a very strong buff. It is a significant character upgrade usually and having multiple ways to progress your character by doing the monolith of fate is a good thing to have. But once again, you only receive the blessing at the end by defeating the boss in the third and final quest echo. And here the same issue applies, that it takes a while to get there. Now, I'm not necessarily advocating to make the whole monolith of fate easier or shorter or whatever. It may look like it, but that's not the case, because this would be battling the symptoms and not the root cause. I feel the contents leading up to the fun stuff, bosses, uniques, blessings, lore and other fun features is currently not great. Your typical random echo, which makes up 90% of each timeline, is not a fun experience. Your typical random echo involves you running ASAP to the objective, kill it and go to the next echo. Rinse and repeat until you're lucky enough to spawn that beloved quest echo. It's boring and annoying sometimes, depending on the rolled modifiers. When you're running the monolith of fate on your first few characters for maybe the first 100 hours, it is all new, it is all fine. But play a while longer and everything starts to feel the same. Why? Well, this brings us to the design decisions. Because the reason the random echoes are boring is not because of the features or the lack of features, but because of the way the monolith of fate is designed. If you look at what the monolith of fate essentially is at the moment, it is just a system which incentivizes you to speedrun 90% of the content just to reach the fun parts, which are not evenly distributed throughout the experience, but are all and only available at the completion of the timeline. So. Which design decisions have led to this situation? For starters, having to do 30-ish echoes at high level before you can complete the timeline feels like a grind. It doesn't even take all that long necessarily, just an hour maybe, unless you die, but it feels like an entire evening. That's because it becomes stale, repetitive and there's hardly any variation. This brings us to the second point, modifiers. The pool of modifiers is very shallow currently, leaving very little choice. At high level monoliths you almost always end up with monsters that have 100% health and damage or even more insane values. Not to mention modifiers like dodge, chill, slow or glancing blow. These ones in particular drain the fun right out of the game. Here you are, cool build and all and then suddenly the whole thing is rendered absolutely useless because monsters dodge half your attacks. To me, that's just not fun. It has nothing to do with the challenge or not. Same thing with chill and slow. It's not adding to the challenge at all. All it does is add to how tedious the random echoes are and it amplifies the grindiness by making monsters more tanky or your characters less fun to play by chilling and slowing them for no real reason. Most status effects cannot currently be countered either, which makes this a lot worse. There are no flasks of heat to counter chill, for example. The biggest issue, however, is how static the monolith of fate is as a system. To compare, let's look at some other action RPGs, in particular PoE. One of the five design pillars of Path of Exile, as clearly stated by Chris Wilson in a lecture on the Game Developers Conference, is randomly generated levels, specifically the layout of those levels. And Chris didn't invent this either, because Diablo 2 already had it. Maybe D1 did as well, but I didn't play that a lot. And this is so incredibly important in keeping a game fresh after a couple of hundred hours and it is the reason I can keep running canyon maps 150 times in a row because while I'm conscious I'm basically doing the exact same map over and over again it doesn't feel like it. Because the layout is different each time. The objectives are different each time. Different events happen in the map each time. The boss placement is a little different each time, although in canyon not so much. 
Compare this to last epoch and you see a huge difference. The level design itself is top notch. It's really impressive. Going through the campaign and seeing everything that took place in that and other eras is sometimes breathtakingly beautiful. But after a few hundred hours you don't notice that anymore. All you notice is how static everything feels. And it doesn't just feel static, it is static. Because level layout is always the same. The areas are always the same. The objectives in the areas always spawn in the same positions. I swear I could draw at least 10 zones in the Monolith of Fate by heart, including objective spawn points and chests, because I ran them so many times. I see Stormswept Isle in the loading screen and I know I can almost complete the level with my eyes closed. This has nothing to do with how many years a game is in development. It has everything to do with design decisions. The campaign and endgame were not designed with randomly generated levels in mind. Despite the heavy influence both Diablo 2 and PoE had on the development of Last Epoch. And maybe at the time when this decision was made, which must have been around 3 years ago at least, there were good arguments for making this decision. And I'm not even criticizing the decision. I wasn't there. I don't know exactly what led to it. Maybe technical limitations of the engine. Maybe limited knowledge on how to implement this. Maybe time constraints. But now, a few years later, this decision starts to take its toll and will keep taking its toll on the longevity of Last Epoch. But in particular, on the monolith of fate, where spawning echoes and running through them ASAP is all you do. It is efficient, sure, but not particularly fun or interesting. In this regard, the game never surprises you, it never throws you a curveball. And in my view, this is a massive problem. Because no matter how many new static levels you put into the pool, it's only a matter of time before the endgame players know the layout. It may take the devs two weeks to create five maps, and by playing those maps for two days you know where everything is. The fact objectives are randomly generated doesn't matter because they spawn in the same spots, whether it's a dragon or a lightning spire. And when you look at progression through the monolith, you see something very similar. You always start at the first level 60 monolith, killing the abomination nation and then the progression through the monolith is rather predictable. You can make two choices in between but that's about it. Every character you create runs through the exact same maps in the campaign to enter the exact same order in the monolith playing the exact same echoes over and over again. And this doesn't make for a very engaging endgame system in the long run. Adding features on top of what the monolith currently is will mask the issues that I'm describing here but it won't solve them. I say mask because by having more stuff to do in static maps you notice less how static they are. But I'm a little concerned about the fundamentals of the monolith, the main pillars on which everything is built. I feel they don't allow for a dynamic experience in the end. No matter how many features you add, I fear the monolith of fate may be flawed at its very core, leading to currently boring endgame. If the devs add more things to do in the echoes, it will help for sure. But at the end of the day, it's all but clear how repetitive everything is. In order to be engaging in the long run, in order to be dynamic, in order to make the experience feel fresh regardless of how many times you do it, I feel this game really, really needs randomly generated levels. The good news is, the monolith of fate isn't done. Mike was teasing more stuff. But going from static maps to randomly generated ones, that is a massive undertaking. And I'm just afraid that the core issues resulting from design decisions made in the past may not get addressed for a long, long time. And it will take a while before the monolith can escape this gameplay loop where you rush to complete the random echoes just in order to complete the timelines as quickly as possible. There's just too little to chase after, too few reasons currently to keep running timelines, which results in a not so fun endgame system. Implementing other systems on this foundation could resolve some of it, but it's the question if the core design is solid enough to host all these add-ons, or if the repetitiveness will seep through its cracks even after a few cycles. The core should be solid, and I'm not so sure it is. I really hope something will change in this regard. It would increase the longevity of the monolith of fate significantly, in my opinion. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.